All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Give me just a second while I get our camera up and running here, and then we should be good to go. Okay, good afternoon and welcome to today's live cooking demonstration. My name is Ryan Smith. I am the Wellness Program Administrator with Georgia State University's Employee Development and Wellness Services. We will be recording today's session so that you'll have an opportunity to view it again later on our EDWS YouTube library or to share it with a colleague who may not have been able to attend today. If you haven't been to our YouTube page, we've got recordings from cooking demonstrations, virtual workouts, meditation, and more, and we highly encourage you to check that out. Throughout today's presentation, if you're experiencing any issues related to audio or video, please let us know in the comment box. My colleague Cheryl is online and she'll be monitoring the chat to try to assist with any of those issues. Additionally, if throughout today's presentation you have questions, comments, or anything you might want to share, we'd love to hear your thoughts. We'll be reviewing all of those comments at the end of the presentation so we can discuss the recipe together. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So today we are going to be making a chickpea and quinoa bowl with a roasted red pepper sauce. Now by trade, I am a registered dietitian, so I'm always looking for a combination of two things whenever I find my recipes. I want them to be nutritious and I want them to be flavorful. And this is definitely one of those that checks the boxes. As a bonus third attribute, uh, this recipe is very simple to make. I love whenever most of the work in a recipe is just assembling things as opposed to really having to put in a lot of labor cooking wise. So if you're looking for something that you can make in a flash, not too difficult, this is a great choice for that. It's gonna make us about four servings. So this is perfect for meal prep. And we'll talk about what you can do to keep things stored safely in the fridge and have a healthy lunch for yourself throughout the week. So the first thing I've done is I've actually gone ahead and started cooking quinoa behind me on the stovetop. Quinoa is gonna be the base of our bowl. If you're not familiar with quinoa, it is a very healthy whole grain option. You can buy it from all sorts of different grocery stores. This year is just from Kroger. It's a uh, tri-color quinoa. They make different colors. They're all nutritionally very beneficial. So you can pick out whichever one speaks to you while you're there. In terms of nutrition content, one of the nice things about quinoa is it's a great source of fiber. And it also has about double the protein of something like rice, if you were to use that in place of it in a grain bowl. So if you haven't tried it before, highly encourage it, very nutritious. Essentially, we have gone ahead and um, measured out the amount. We're looking to get two cups of cooked quinoa at the end of this. And on your package instructions, it'll tell you that quin dry quinoa will triple in size whenever you cook it. So in order to get those two cups, I did a two thirds cup measure of the dry quinoa. And then you'll just cook that on your stovetop behind you. Next, we'll go ahead and move into the rest of the bowl ingredients. So we're going to be making use of a small food processor today. Um, this is going to be required for the recipe. If you don't have a small food processor, they're a fairly cheap investment. If you get a smaller one, you can also get by with just a blender today. If you happen to have one of those, it may not um, process things quite as smoothly, but if you work with a spatula to keep things on the lower end of the blender, you can definitely still make this work. So with your food processor, we're going to make our roasted red pepper sauce. The primary ingredient is roasted red peppers. Now you can buy these in a jar. Um, you're usually gonna find them in the aisle next to things like olives, pickles, other jarred goods. What these are are essentially red bell peppers like you'd see in the grocery store in the fresh produce section that have been roasted and then are canned in this jar here. And it will make them last a little bit longer, but it gives them a nice uh, sort of smoky flavor to it. It really brings out some interesting notes there. So we're going to use six ounces of roasted red pepper. One of these jars is typically 12 ounces, so you can get by with just half a jar of that. If you're working with a blender or something that's not very powerful, you may want to chop it up a little bit on your own before putting it in. Um, I know my food processor can handle it, so just to show you what it looks like, it's literally just softened pieces of red pepper that have been roasted and jarred. So I'm just gonna pour those in there. Um, I use the word pour, though I should note that uh, this will have a lot of liquid in, liquid in it when you buy it, like a jar of pickles. You do want to drain that excess liquid out. We're not trying to put that much uh, liquid in here or it'll make the sauce a little too watery. So we've got our roasted red peppers in there. Next, we're gonna add a quarter cup of almonds. So these almonds are gonna add uh, a nice nutty flavor to it. They're also gonna give us some healthy fats and boost the protein content a little bit. 
And we're going to talk about all the different ways we're getting in some plant-based protein throughout this meal. So a quarter cup of almonds going in there. Now let's add some seasoning and flavoring. We're going to do two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, a teaspoon of paprika, and I should note, this is just regular paprika. I'm not using smoked paprika. That has a little bit of a different flavor profile to it. You're welcome to use that if you want to. Typically, I would scale down the amount of smoked paprika if I was using it because it is more intense. So this is a teaspoon of just regular paprika. We're gonna do half a teaspoon of ground cumin. And then finally, a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. If you are not a big fan of spice, you can take that out. Maybe you've got uh, maybe it's just something you don't really care for, or if you've got any reflux, spicy things can trigger that sometimes. You're welcome to leave the red pepper flakes out. In terms of the spiciness of this sauce, I consider it to be very mild. So if you're worried about it being too hot, I really wouldn't worry too much on that. Uh, in that regard, overall, it's a very mild sauce. It's a pretty good crowd-pleasing flavor. So we've got all those different ingredients in there. We're missing one more flavor, which is our garlic. Garlic is one of my favorite things to add to foods because it just adds so much flavor. Now I'm using minced garlic. So if you want to use fresh, you can. You're going to use one clove of fresh garlic. Or if you're using minced garlic, the equivalent of a fresh clove is half a teaspoon. So we'll just put that in there. So all together, that's some olive oil, paprika, cumin, red pepper flakes, minced garlic, our slivered almonds, the quarter of a cup that we did, and then six ounces of the roasted red pepper. So I'll go ahead and put my lid on here and there's gonna be a little bit of noise. I'm just gonna pulse this until it is smooth and creamy. Again, we're making a sauce with this. All right. And the roasted red peppers are incredibly soft. They're not going to have the firmness and stiffness of a fresh uh, red bell pepper. So you'll notice things blend pretty easily. It really shouldn't take that much work. As I mentioned, if you're working with a blender, you may want to have a spatula nearby. You can kind of push things down as needed. Um, we don't really have to be worried about that with the food processor, though. So for now, let's go ahead and set this over to the side. That is our roasted red pepper sauce. It's that easy to make. Next, we're going to start prepping some of our vegetables. So one of the uh, core vegetables that's gonna go into this dish is a cucumber. Essentially, we're kind of making like a Greek style salad bowl. We've got a lot of Mediterranean inspired flavors. Cucumbers are very popular in those dishes. So we're gonna need a cup of diced cucumber. Depending on the size of your cucumber, you might get anywhere from one to two cups out of it. I had a pretty large cucumber, so I've gone ahead and cut it in half because I'll be able to get about a cup out of this. You can cut the cucumber however you prefer. Some people might choose to do little rounded slices and then go back and cut those up. What I typically do is I will cut it into really long vertical strips. I'll show you here. So I'll cut it into a long vertical strip like that. I'll make about three to four of those and then I'll turn it and then curling my fingers to protect those fingertips from the knife. I'm just going to run the knife through it and get a nice chop going. These don't have to be perfectly sized. Uh, we just want the pieces to be small enough that when you're biting into them in the salad, they're not gonna overwhelm you with a whole mouthful of cucumber. Nutritionally, all the vegetables that we're putting into this dish are gonna help us out. They're gonna contribute things like water. So one way we can get hydrated, in addition to drinking water, is when we eat fruits and vegetables, that actually counts towards our fluid needs for the day. Cucumbers are very, very watery for a vegetable. There's a lot of water content inside of them. So they're very hydrating, which is nice. They also are a source of fiber, which can help us feel full and satisfied, promotes a healthy cholesterol, as well as healthy blood sugar levels. So really a lot of good benefit coming from the cucumber and the other vegetables. So that's about a cup of chopped cucumber. I'm just gonna push that to the side for now. And uh, the next thing I'm gonna talk about are our chickpeas or garbanzo beans. This is gonna be the main source of protein coming from the dish. So again, you can, uh, they may be labeled as chickpeas or garbanzo beans. This is just a regular 15 ounce can. We're gonna buy one of those and rinse and drain it. And then you will be presented with your chickpeas. If you've ever had hummus before, that's made from chickpeas. Uh, like I said, they're used in a lot of Mediterranean dishes. Um, I like the flavor that they bring and they work really well with this roasted red pepper sauce we're gonna put on top. 
So this is our main plant-based protein. Chickpeas are an excellent source of fiber as well as the protein that they're bringing to the dish. So a lot of good nutritional benefit coming in from there. Now, around this time, if you've been working on the quinoa, uh, it should be getting close to finished. Typically it'll take about 15 minutes to cook the quinoa. So I'm, I've already pre-cooked mine. I'm gonna go ahead and grab it. And if you're unfamiliar with it, just to show you what that ends up looking like, we can give you a little picture here. This is the tricolored kind, so you can hopefully see in the light there the different specks of the brown, the lighter beige color, and the little black ones. Um, and it has a very kind of fluffy texture to it. If you haven't had it before, you really just have to try it. It's closest to brown rice, I would say, uh, for comparing it to other foods, but it's different. I like, I like it a lot. I think it has a more complex flavor, and nutritionally, uh, it's got more protein and more fiber. So in a medium bowl here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our two cups of cooked quinoa that we've made, and we're just gonna scoop that in there. And your quinoa, of course, is gonna be hot as you finish cooking it. This meal is designed to be served cold. Um, you'll refrigerate it and you don't need to heat it back up. So once everything cools, that's the desired temperature. You can eat it hot, um, but usually dishes with things like cucumbers in them are designed to be chilled. So we've got our two cups of cooked quinoa in a medium bowl here. And now we're gonna add a couple things and just mix them together, give a little more flavor to the quinoa. The first is I've gone ahead and pre-chopped a quarter cup of red onion. So that's gonna give us a little more flavor, make things a bit more interesting. We're gonna add two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil again, focusing on those heart healthy fats, helping us feel full and satisfied, but still doing good for our body. And then, the final ingredient are Kalamata olives. Now, not everyone's crazy about these. Uh, they can be kind of divisive. Some people prefer black olives. Some people might just not like olives at all. They're adding a nice sort of salty, briny flavor to this. Uh, some people will really enjoy it. Others, if you're not a big fan of Kalamata olives or olives in general, you might consider leaving them out here. Um, or as I mentioned, you can substitute them with black olives. We're only using a quarter cup and these were sliced and then I just diced them a little bit more to make them into smaller pieces. And we're just gonna add that into the mix here. Now using a spoon, we wanna mix this around. We're just kind of looking for that olive oil to be evenly distributed, mixing the onions and the olives in. And again, the goal here is really just to add uh, a little bit of salty flavor to it, a little bit of that heart healthy fat uh, and make the quinoa a bit more interesting. There are actually a number of ways you can flavor quinoa. Some people will cook it in um, like chicken broth instead of water whenever you're making it, which will add more interesting flavor to it. That is entirely up to you. Right now, this meal is entirely plant-based, but you could certainly work with chicken broth if you were interested. So let's set this to the side for just a moment. We now have our quinoa base, our chickpeas. We've got some chopped cucumber here and our roasted red pepper sauce. This is a meal prep meal. So what you'll do is you'll want to divide this evenly, as evenly as possible, into four meal prep containers. So I've just got a simple plastic Tupperware container here. What we're gonna do, because we made about two cups of quinoa, is we're gonna aim for about half a cup per serving. Now, if you want to be exact with it, you can absolutely do that. Get your little measuring scoop out, um, scoop that up, and then try to perfectly portion it into the meal prep containers. If you're really focusing on the meal prep aspect, I would recommend measuring things just so that you can be consistent with it. I'll use a spoon here and just sort of spread that out into a flat base on the bottom of the container. Again, we're making a little bowl here. Then similarly, we're gonna take uh, about a quarter of the chickpeas. I'm just gonna eyeball these and we're gonna sprinkle that on top, adding in that protein and that fiber. Same idea, we'll take about a quarter cup of the cucumber here. Sprinkle those pieces on top, more fiber, a little bit of hydration in there. And then what we can do is take some of our roasted red pepper sauce and drizzle again, approximately a quarter of that on top of our dish. I'm actually gonna just use a spatula here and sort of layer that on top. Now, when it comes time to serve this, I'd recommend stirring everything together, mixing that red pepper sauce in. But there are a couple more things we're gonna to add to bring out even more flavor. We're gonna use some crumbled, uh, or some feta cheese crumbles. We're not looking to do a whole lot here. Across the entire recipe, there should be about a quarter of a cup, um, which means we're really just aiming for just a tablespoon per serving. Now that may not seem like a whole lot of cheese, 
Uh, but we're trying to limit the total amount of salt that we're putting in the dish. We want it to be flavorful, uh, but we're going to still kind of moderate the cheese. Cheese is a delicious food, one of my favorites. Um, but we're keeping it as just a topping and not really making it the center of attention here. So I'm going to scoop in here, get about a tablespoon, and sprinkle some of those feta cheese crumbles on top. That's going to add a nice little flavorful punch as we take our bites and enjoy the dish. And then the last thing you can do that is also optional is... We're gonna use some fresh parsley here. I've gone ahead and rinsed it. And we are just gonna, I'm gonna chop these stems off. I'm just gonna finally chop this up and sprinkle a little bit of parsley on top. Now, not everyone's crazy about parsley and that is totally understandable. Uh, I kind of think of it like cilantro, though they're very different in flavor. The applications for them, some people just prefer to leave things like that out of dishes, but I think it adds some nice interesting variety and flavors and textures here. So I'm just chopping that up finely and just a little bit of sprinkle of that on top. Okay, and that's really it. It is an incredibly simple dish. Uh, in this plastic container, it doesn't look quite as aesthetic or beautiful as it did in the nice bowls in the photo I showed at the beginning of the demonstration, but it's a really simple Mediterranean sort of Greek-inspired salad. Calorie-wise, it's uh, about 450 calories, so a very reasonable portion for someone to enjoy uh, for a lunch or even a dinner meal if you wanted to have it for that. It comes out to about 13 grams of plant-based protein. We've got the chickpeas contributing, the quinoa contributing, and then those sliced almonds that we mix into the roasted red pepper sauce bump us up just a little bit. It's packed with heart-healthy fats between the uh, extra virgin olive oil, between the nuts that we added from the almonds, rich in fiber from things like the cucumbers, the quinoa, the chickpeas, and the red peppers that we worked into the sauce. So there's really a lot of good nutritional value here. When we try to create a meal that is balanced, we're typically looking for healthy proteins, healthy carbohydrates, and healthy fats. Those three things help fuel our bodies and keep everything in a nice balance, and this dish is a perfect example of it. So once you've assembled that, you can put a lid on it and store those in the refrigerator. It's good for up to four days, so it's a good idea to do something like this maybe on a day off. Sunday is a common meal prep day for a lot of people. You could make one of these. Uh, and then have your meals set for the upcoming days. So it's a great way to do that. If you're worried at all about the texture of some of the foods, uh, I might recommend packaging the sauce separately. So having a little like salad dressing container and adding that at the very end. Everything else should stay nice in texture, but when you add a liquid to that, sometimes things like the cucumbers might soften or get a little mushy. So you may wish to keep that separate, but I'll leave that up to you. Um, so we're going to be sending out a copy of the recipe along with the more detailed nutrition information. So if you really want to look at how this might fit into your day, we'll be sure to provide all of that information. I do see we've got a couple comments and questions in the chat. So I want to turn my attention here um, and just kind of read those. Okay, so one of the questions is where can we find the ingredients and recipe for this meal? So if you attended today, you're going to get a follow-up email either later today uh, or if not today, tomorrow, that will include a full breakdown of all the ingredients and the nutrition information. You'll also get a link to the recording. So if you want to share it with someone else or follow along or anything like that, you'll have the opportunity to do so. Uh, here's a comment here, not a fan of Greek olives. Uh, so I'll be substituting regular black olives. However, my kids don't like either of them. What would be another option? Great question. So you already mentioned the black olive substitution. I think that's a nice substitute for the Kalamata ones if you're not a big fan of them. Um, for your kids, if they really don't like olives, all the olives are really contributing is just a little bit of that salty flavor to it. Um, the feta cheese that we put on top at the very end is also going to contribute that. So I think the dish would work just as well without the olives at all. The feta cheese adds a very nice you know, taste to it. Like I said, I love cheese. So if you wanted to for the kids, maybe even put just a little bit of extra feta on top to sort of balance that out a little bit, but you'd also be fine just keeping the olives out of the recipe. They're not a crucial part by any means. So great question, thank you. Um, oh, okay, see some uh, comments about it looking good. Glad to hear it. Um, and here's another question. Could fresh red peppers be substituted for the canned? Great question. So the way this sauce works is it is a roasted red pepper sauce and we're relying on the flavor that comes from the red pepper being roasted. So these jarred ones have been through a special cooking process that allows them to be softened and also more flavorful, a little smoky. Whenever we use the food processor, the fact that they've been pre-cooked and softened makes this possible. If you were to put a fresh bell pepper in a food processor, 
Uh, depending on the strength of your food processor, you might be able to chop it up a little bit, but you're not going to get it to work into a sauce like this. I mean, you probably saw me pour it. This is uh, very liquidy. It's really been softened. What you can do, though, if you don't want to buy the jarred ones, is you can actually roast red peppers at home. It's a little bit outside of the scope of kind of what we're talking about for this demonstration. But if you look it up online, you can use a stovetop to manually roast those red peppers and kind of create your own if you want to just stay away from the jarred ones. But I do think that roasted red pepper is going to be crucial for this particular sauce. That being said, there's nothing about this dish that relies entirely on the roasted red pepper sauce. If you wanted to make your own salad dressing, um, maybe a little bit of a vinaigrette, you know, or combine, combining some vinegar with some extra virgin olive oil, you could definitely flavor this in other ways or just use a pre-made salad dressing to add that to the top of things. The rest of it is still nutritionally sound. We still have a lot of good in there. So you can definitely swap out those flavors if you're just not feeling the roasted red pepper aspect. Okay. Uh, another good question here. Can you incorporate two different types of beans into this? Absolutely. I think chickpeas uh, are one of the more neutrally flavored um, legumes, beans, when we're talking about things. But if you wanted to shift those flavors a little bit, I see no reason why you couldn't do pinto beans, black beans, kidney beans. If you've seen me cook on this program before, I frequently will buy the tri-bean blend, which is a mix of all three of those. Um, and there's no reason why you couldn't pair that with this sauce. This is definitely going for more of that uh, Mediterranean vibe that I described earlier. But yeah, you could definitely swap those out. Similarly, if you wanted to incorporate some other vegetables, I could see some like diced tomatoes being really nice on top of this. So get creative with it, mix it up. Our goal here is really just, can we add a lot of vegetables to what we're eating to improve our diet? And any way that you manage to do that is gonna work well. Um, okay, and then another question about olives, would green olives work? They have a buttery flavor I like and also taste a little less salty. I think you could definitely work the green olives in. Um, I would still recommend chopping them up just so they're evenly distributed in here. Uh, but yeah, if you wanted to maybe lean away from the sort of salty, briny taste of some of the olives and go for the more buttery green olives, absolutely. Um, I see no reason why that wouldn't work well in this dish. If you do try it, I'd love to hear how it is. I always like to hear people kind of experimenting and mixing things up and then just kind of letting me know how it goes. So great suggestion. Okay, scrolling through the chat here. Um, I don't see any other questions at this time. So again, just as a reminder, everyone on this uh, program today is going to get a follow-up email in the next day or two that will include the recipe, a link to the video, as well as a link to a short survey. We really appreciate feedback on any of our programs. The survey takes about 60 seconds to fill out, and it directly helps us know what kind of content you would like to see in the future. So if you could take the time to do that, we'd really appreciate it. If you're not already on our EDWS mailing list, we do events like this all throughout the month. Um, cooking demonstration today, we have a guided meditation tomorrow at noon. Our events are all posted on the GSU web calendar and are frequently shared on the USG web calendar as well if you're visiting us from another institution. If you're not on our mailing list, I'm gonna drop our email in the chat. It's edws at gsu.edu. We can get you on that list and we send out weekly reminders of all the good stuff we've got going on. So thank you again, everyone, so much for attending today, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.